everybody, it's Chris and Dean. And my daughter Maisie, so she might make baby noises. <laughs> From GamingTheSwag.com again, and we're here today to review the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Dice Masters uh, Collector's Box Set. This was given to us by WizKids. This is very unique because um, this set, there are no booster packs. This is the only two things you will it's see. A complete set. There's no starter set, there's no boosters, it's a complete set. So you see that there are 92 custom dice included. Just give you a look at the back. You can see here the contents are 92 custom dice, 62 cards, one rule book, four paper play mats, four dice bags, and two dice storage trays. And there's also an official mat that was given to us as well. We'll take a look at that. So let's do that first. We like to unroll that thing. So we're going to go ahead and get that going. Careful, don't step the mat. Yeah, I wanna, don't want to break it. I used to do the knife work, but I'm holding a baby. Yeah, it's not always safest. <laughs> All right. It's also not safe if I have it either. Let's be honest here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say. Whoa. Look at that. All right. Let's Funny see. Zipping it out of the frame. I like, I like the shredder and like the, the, the good versus evil overtone. It's a little darker than most it of them. Definitely it definitely is. definitely a unique color palette with the purple and green versus the other sets that have come out. It's, which are usually more like the blue, red. Yeah. It looks like more like the up. comic stuff in the background. This really has nothing to do with the show. It has comic panels. Yeah. And even there, they're all red. Yeah, all the, the original comics. So this seems like the set's a mix of the movies, the cartoons, the comics. Yeah. So this is scheduled to release later this May. And the movie is scheduled to release, I believe, in first weekend in June. Yeah. So um, I definitely think that this was great timing on their part. Uh, I've been looking forward to this set for quite some time, ever since they announced it, just because uh, I'm a big Turtles fan. And I'm hoping that this they do more one-off sets, like, maybe it's not a series that can be sustained as like as popularity as Marvel or DC, yeah. but maybe we'll get some other kind of fun one-off sets that okay. would be worth having. Right, exactly. So there's your paper play mats. They're, uh, they're nothing special. Just uh, a couple leaflets there in case you really didn't have a mat. And there is your rule book. So that's a little different rule book yeah. than all the other ones that are usually more the skinny and tall. So I have them all stacked together. Now it's not one's not gonna stack the same. <laughs> a new affiliation. The shell is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles affiliation. And as always, we have the villains. All right. Looks like it's pretty much otherwise the same. Okay. I'm not gonna look at that too much. Pre-separate them all. Wow! Right? So we get purple, red, orange, and blue for action dice. All of those have existed before. Still all of these individual baggies. We got one, yeah, two, no, four sets of sidekick, sidekick dice. So you could play with four people. Interesting. Set. Whereas most of starter kits only come with two. Okay, so it's double the. Yeah, so you get double the starters. Nice. Let's leave these in here. Yeah, it's fine. We are everyone knows what those are. Well, I guess we should kind of do the cards then first. Well, here, here's the, the dice and here's dance. the bags. <laughs> Although this, is, yeah, right. Here's the here's the bags. Looks like one per turtle. There's Leo's katana blades. We got blue stripe. Yep, and Michelangelo's nunchucks. He's a party dude. And Donatello, he does machines. Yeah, he's purple. <laughs> And I, Raphael's cool but rude. Yes, he is rude. That's right. <laughs> Give me a rude. break. <laughs> Give me a break. All right, so there's your dice bag. So those have, you know, we've kind of mentioned in the past couple sets, the dice bags have gotten a lot cooler, um, which is nice. So, yeah. Okay. Let's take a look here. Here's your... So we're going to spend some time, since there's not much um, to reveal with boosters, we're going to spend some time looking at some of the... Um, card powers a little more in depth of this set. So again, red, orange, purple, and blue. Those are our action card colors. And let's see here. I'm going to move the dice so we have some room to display. If you want to pick out the dice as we go, Dean, that would yeah, be great. Yeah, I'll try to throw them over. Now let's do that. What you got? All right, cool. All right, so. I can. Well, I found Splinter. So we're just going to start at the top deck. First one's April. 
April O'Neil, Channel 6 reporter. She's yellow with a little camera. I think it's her. Okay. All right. And that oh. cartoon with a classic yellow outfit. Baxter Stockman, a great classic villain. And this is a him in the fly form. So you you love. She got a weird bug head. Dye. He does have a weird bug head die. That's pretty cool. Show that one out. Nice. Four and five, though. They made him a little more uh, powerful than I would have thought. Yeah, because he's not... I mean, he's a pain in the butt in the in the comics, the games, and the cartoon, but not that much. Not like a yeah. shred or anything. Yeah. Bebop! That's uh, totally based on the cartoon. He's orange. he got his face. He got four, the, five, six. the mohawk, snout, all that. For the Bebop dice. Cool. Oh, there's your boy Casey Jones, straight out of the comic. Yes. So for him, you've got the sports mask that he's wearing. Nice. They made him pretty weak. Two, three. Wow. So April and Casey Jones are on the, the weak end of the spectrum for your turtle friends. Donatello does machines. That's a card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they know, they know what they're doing. Donnie and the Mad Scientist. So the turtle dice are all green. And yeah, then the color. the color. Yeah. And Is it their weapon? Yes, yeah, their weapon. That's... There you go. They had them all turned. So you have his bow staff. Cool. Alright. Foot, foot Ninja. What color is that? Uh, Red and black. Is it this one? No, it's a foot. It's got a foot on it. Is it that one? It's blue. Excuse me. It looks like it's almost like a dark, dark blue. Dark blue with a little foot. Yeah, there you go. Alright, cool. Two and three. That seems appropriate. Wow. This is a, this is a classic character. Fugitoid. I haven't seen him in a long time. Fugitoid? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Alright, he's got like a robot head. Very or cool. like a cheap submarine. <laughs> Krang. Classic cartoon. Gotta have Krang. He should be this color here. Yep, he's got Krang. Straight up in there. Krang the brain. Yep, quadoed up in someone's stomach. It's awesome. Leonardo, he leads. <laughs> mm hmm. You got the katana. Michelangelo, he's a party dude. Does it say party dude on it? It does. <laughs> you <your> nunchucks. <laughs> His other card says party. We'll look at these in depth. Four, a five, and bit. six. Do all the turtles have four, five, six? No, Donald Trump no. is four, five, five. Yeah. Four, five, six for Leonardo and four, five, six for Michelangelo. Let's see what Raphael does. See, next time's in. Nope. It's, it's all spectacle. Mousers. Those evil, Two and three. annoying okay, bots. So they are. They were so annoying in the, in the arcade game. Yep. When they get on there, you have to shake them off. Shake them off. Ah! That's right. <laughs> Raphael, he's cool but rude. There it is. Four, four, five. So he is the weakest, but he does have the shortest weapon. Interesting. We're gonna be real. A sigh. That's would, right. Would be harder to use than a nunchucks, the bow staff, or a katana blade. Rock steady. That on camera. Yep. Okay. Here he is. This is kind of his horn and the top of his head as his eye. The shredder card is really cool. Rolling purple with the shredder. It's just his head. Six, seven, eight. So he's definitely the most powerful in this set. Splinter. Straight from the cartoon. Five, six, seven. There we go. Splinter. Oh, there's actually, that's so cartoon splinter, and then there's, looks like, a different splinter in the comics or something else. Interesting. Uh, it's a it's a bonsai tree, is his image. So you could use this if your own custom Karate Kid, was it three, two? Where they had the bonsai tree, they had to go... Three. <laughs> that's three, yep. All right, so that's all your main characters. So that pretty much covers a lot of people. The only one I'm a little surprised about is Fugitoid. I didn't realize yeah. that that would be a thing. There's got to be... I would have put Slash in. I would have put, you know, a couple I don't, Leatherhead. 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 Right? And I think Leatherhead is fun in the cartoon. The Rat King? Uh, oh, I don't God. know about Rat King. The but Rat King, man. There's, there's, I feel like there's more iconic villains than... Well, unless he's bigger in the cartoon. Mecha we, we don't watch the cartoon. Oh, what about a Rock Soldier? Rock Soldier? Yeah, the old, like the stone Rock Soldiers. Like, those were... Yeah. I don't know. You could have so, gone. You could have gone Ninja Turtles two with Taka and Razer, uh, or at least maybe one of them, or have Vanilla Ice or a Super Shredder card. 
Super Shredder. Well, they already have a couple. I wonder if Super Shredder's 8 is Super Shredder. Let's see. That could be. Foot, join me. <laughs> when fielded, move all villain dice from your used pile to your prep area. Actually, that's pretty That's pretty brutal. That's the only 8 in the whole in the whole Which is pack. pretty typical. They don't, yeah. They're usually light on their 8s, especially like things above 8. There's only a couple like your Phoenixes, your Thanoses. Now, as cool as these are, I honestly think that the action cards might be my favorite part of this deck. So far. So far. Just by kind of thumbing through these. I'm going to kind of give you a look. Cowabunga. This is straight up. I probably had a t-shirt with that cartoon on it right there. When yeah, I, was a kid. I probably had uh, sheets and a pillowcase. <laughs> yeah, right? If you have exactly one character die in the field zone, it gets plus four attack and overcrush until the end of the turn. Dang. I know. How much if is you, that one? That's four. If you have more than one character die in the field, instead you only get one attack for your character. So it's basically if you're the only person out there, okay. you know, you're you're going to rule the roost, so to speak. Yeah, that's still pretty useful. It can make a weak character strong or strong Absolutely. character devastating. Enraged. This is a image based off the comics. Up to two of your target character dice get plus one attack and overcrush until end of turn. They're really pushing that overcrush now. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, yeah they did I, that in the last couple sets. It, uh, it gets rid of chump blocking a bit. It really does. <laughs> Give me a break. That's the name of the card. <laughs> target non-turtle character dice can't block until the end of turn. But there's also a global. You can pay an energy until a uh, lightning energy until the end of the turn. When a character is assigned to block, deal it one damage. Here's in half shell, another iconic, classic 1980s look. If a target character die gets plus two attack until the end of the turn. If it's a turtle character, it also gets plus two defense. I'm imagining it's going to be like a pizza power, or a tossing of a pizza, or a healing with pizza. Yeah. It's going to be pizza. I hope so. It's got to be pizza. Lethal blow. Move target level one character die from the field zone to the prep area. If you have a burst, instead, target any character die in the field zone. Instead, if you have a double burst, Move any target character died to the bag. That's some cool artwork on there, too. That's the original comic. Well, it costs art. five, but you could knock out the most powerful person. Right. There hey, it is. here's the pizza card. Pizza! Gain one life. You may not use this basic action die if you have 15 or more life. So if you're low on health, uh, uh -huh. over a quarter well, of the way down. One health isn't that great, but then it's only, but it's only one a one cost. It's only a one so cost. So just buying that just to get the double, just to make it easier to yeah. buy a more expensive pizza. And people. the global. The global, if you have it in play, once during your turn, if you have less than 10 life, gain one life, but you'd pay a shield energy. Okay. I Do we know? I mean, there's not many one cards out there. I, in fact, I mean, I could be wrong, but I can't think of one. I can't think of one, at least in the Marvel and DC sets. Yeah, we didn't we didn't buy in on um, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons. Yeah. We stuck with our superheroes only. Reckless Abandon got Casey Jones uh, caught in the card here. Deal one damage to each character die, including your own. Burst, instead, deal one damage to each player. Two bursts, instead, deal one damage to each player and each character die. That's pretty cool. You roll that double burst, you're you're, you're rocking it. Whoops, sorry. What if they have a cricket bat for him? Oh, um, that was a big part of the movie. Cricket? Yeah. You gotta I understand see. a crumpet. Pain 101. Yeah, I don't see his hockey stick or anything like that. Yeah. No. Special delivery, draw two dice from your bag and roll them. Place them in your reserve pool. Tactical cover. So, what's he got there, Dean? Is that a cricket bat? That looks like a traditional bat. Like a baseball bat. Yeah. Your character dice get two, plus two defense. If you have a burst, also target character gets three defense. You can also have a global target character die gets one defense until the end of the turn. And last but not least, the turtle van. Okay. As far as I know, it is called the party wagon. Mm -hmm. And it is continuous. That's new. Continuous. You may send this die to the use pile to prevent all damage to target blocking character. Continuous. One. Interesting. Okay. So it sits there? Interesting. I guess so. I, let me see if I can find anything in the book. But yeah. Continuous is something So I new imagine, although this is a complete set, there's almost always the OP or the official play cards. So I imagine those are going to be the more collectible ones since pretty much anyone can get every Turtles card. And then they could they could add in some more fun or unique characters through the OP sets, as long as they include the dice. A lot of times the OP is just a card, in which case it would have to be people that are already in the set. So you have the dice already. Continuous isn't in the in the book. I'm just assuming it just means it keeps going. There's other cards, I think, that have that kind of feature, like the... Um, 
like the bat cave and other like area type uh, things where you can do a permanent effect, um, like an item. Um, right. I think Loki's scepter had F elements or something like that, or uh, the Captain America shield where it can like permanently do some or at least more continuously impact something. Right. It looks like a lot of the turtles, you're basically relying on building a deck around the turtles because a lot of them have a turtle power. So the turtle power and Raphael is active, all of their turtle character dice cost one less. So they want you to build a team around at least one other turtle. Yeah, it's probably turtles versus villains. It's, it's probably how this deck is. Yeah, I mean, April. Up. There's only two affiliations. April has a bonus for the turtles, and the one splinter card does, but the other one does not. So I, I think they've made the the combat setup a little bit more simple with like the last couple sets where you yeah. have Civil War, you have Batman versus Superman, and here you have yeah. Turtles versus Shredder. So yeah, you know they're, they're kind of built around two obvious teams instead of a whole bunch of people you can put together. Casey Jones is like a really good low cost character, two two three. Um, he's not super strong, but Casey Jones can't be blocked by sidekicks or any villain character dice. Oh. It's pretty the useful. First, most expensive one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty good. The artwork is really solid in these cards. I like the the brick background instead of the plain white. Um, I like how they mixed it up between new and old. Um, Although it's mostly artwork. cartoon, I would say the cartoon is probably the main. Um, I I mean, yeah. There's a lot of the comic stuff, like like the turtles are all comics based. Like all four turtles are comic based, and then you have. Casey Jones, he's comic based, and then some of the newer stuff like Shredder. I think that's a newer art. Then Splinter looks, looks more like art. he has the, the setup of the original, and that's definitely new. That Foot Ninja, I've never seen that before. Well, for the Bebop, while Rocksteady is active, you can keep re-rolling Bebop until you get a face. Hmm. The Foot Ninja is something new I haven't seen in April too. It's called Ally. This die counts as a sidekick in the field zone. Very interesting and. April's the same way. Yeah, actually, all the Bebop cards are based on if Rocksteady's out there first. In the in the uh, manual, in the lexicon in the back, ally, character dice with the ally ability count as sidekicks, also while in the field zone. They don't count as sidekick dice when in the bag, prep area, use pile, or anywhere else. Okay. Only in the field do they count so as So for the people sidekicks. that have sidekick-related abilities right. that can help or hurt you. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. So, I mean, this is an awesome set. I mean, maybe they thought that the Target demo wasn't good enough to do a starter and uh, and boosters for these. I'm not too sure. I'm also thinking, I mean, I'm not sure how they're doing elsewhere, but, like, our a lot of our local places don't buy the boosters. Yeah. So, if, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to really play like you might want when it's based on getting the boosters. You have to order online or you have to get off of eBay. Maybe they're trying this model where they have one product to try to sell to stores that aren't like necessarily as into gaming, like a Walgreens or a Target. It's a one-shot deal, and then yeah. you're good to go. Because Target seems to understand Pokemon, and that's it. <laughs> if it's not Pokemon, they're like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, they, they really don't have much anymore. They used to have Avengers vs. X-Men boosters at Target. The very first set, the very nothing first set, since and then. then. Yep, you're right, nothing since then. Walgreens has had Ultron ones, but nothing since that either. Yeah, have they, you they seen sampled the Age of Ultron. We went all around. We bought them all. Up. Yeah, right. We bought a good bit of them. And our our local comic store hasn't really gotten many either. Um, I think they stopped around. They bought the Uncanny X Men yeah. set. They didn't sell out immediately and gave up. Yeah, that's, <laughs> which is pretty sad. But just like, give I, you. I keep buying them. And up close, I know, because you never know what you're going to pull. So you can see there's a Casey Jones and a Michelangelo die. Gonna give you a little sample there. It looks a little bit like the Misfits cover, so you could make a Henry yeah. Rollins custom die. I feel like Henry Rollins is probably a little stronger than that. But now, because of this, there is no checklist. There is no rarity. They're all common. They're all common cards. But at least you know you have the complete set. Yeah. So there's no hunting or fishing for these. These are you know straight up. That's it. And we'll see if they do OP. Yeah. So just a reminder, we got all the dice, all the cards right here, all their action cards. We have the four bags. And we have the rule book, and we have the four playing mats in case you didn't have one. And this thing comes with its own storage, so you don't have to buy more Zen bins if you don't want to. This is true. But I always like me some more Zen bins, Dean. Yeah. So, very good. I really like the set. Kids, you did a great job. 
Looking forward to playing with some of these and building some cool teams. I can't wait to mix and match. I know that's frowned upon in some circles, but we play very casually and we like to, you know, throw up some Casey Jones, April O'Neil, Cyclops, Bishop, mm -hmm. and uh, Batman. So, <laughs> you know, you never know what kind of cool team you're going to do. We could do like an all jerk leader team with Cyclops and Leonardo together. Uh, who else could we get? Just kind of a jerk leader. Deadpool. He's more of a he's a loner. But yeah, this could be a uh, this could be fun. Yeah. Who would Shredder pal up with in the DC universe? You know, Green Lantern. Well, they'd be friends. You think? So? <laughs> Doubt it. I know Green Lantern would hate April O'Neil in that yellow outfit. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. April April can trump Green Lantern any day of the week. Apparently. Right. Sure. Oh, very good. All right, cool. Well, listen, this has been great. We're uh, awaiting our Marvel Civil War grab feed. That'll be our next Dice Masters video. Please subscribe to us. Check us out because we're going to do our annual, uh, not annual, excuse me, our draft that we regularly yes. do for each set. So looking forward to getting some super rares and hopefully get some really cool cards out of that set. And uh, yeah, check us out on social media in the show notes. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we will check you guys next time. Game on.